I'm going to introduce John Meock, who's uh, leaning on the car here, <laughs> uh, and beside him, Aidan Kerr. John is uh, president of uh, uh, Westport Historical Society, who are responsible for the running and operation on a voluntary basis of the Clue Bay Heritage Centre out of Westport Quay. And uh, it was this man here, John Meock of Gurtha Row, uh, an amateur historian who, in the course of his research work, when he was doing a, a degree course uh, on heritage and history, he stumbled upon the fact that contrary to common belief, it was not James Wyatt who designed the town of Westport. Now across the road here from us we have the, the very impressive Wyatt Hotel, one of the old one of the oldest buildings in the town of Westport. And the reason it's titled the Wyatt Hotel was acknowledging, as was then thought, uh, the man who was responsible for designing the town of Westport. Now most of you here will know that Westport was the very first planned town in all of Ireland. The town was laid out by by professional architect before the town the development of the town was commenced. Now, very briefly, the reason the town was laid out here was the old 250 years ago that happened, but the old town of Westport existed in uh, clusters of villages in the area of Westport Harbour and then when the harbour itself was developed by Lord Sligo for commercial uh, um, operations um, if the clusters of houses had got nearer and nearer Lord Sligo's uh, mansion, Westport House and he was very anxious to have a landscape grounds surrounding his house and to clear away some of the mud cabins of the, the peasants. So he commissioned uh, a man to lay out Westport Town, and this was the new town of Westport. But the man responsible for discovering that, like, it's like a lot of the classic art, uh, for years and years, uh, you know, famous masterpieces were credited to the wrong artist. And in this town, the, the design of Westport has been for years, well, for centuries, credited to the wrong man. And unfortunately, even today now, the promotion material relative to Westport points out that Westport's this first plant town in Ireland was designed by James Wyatt. But it wasn't designed by James Wyatt. And this man now is going to tell us uh, who it was. Uh, designed by. Thank you, Martin. After that introduction, I keep it well up. Um, I just not the work. The work for Wyatt anymore. But there was two, there was two uh, Wyatt's, uh, their father and son. And uh, it's, the father was a famous architect in England, Britain. Oh. And uh, the son, not so famous, but the son was in Westport and did design certain uh, structures in Westport, but that was 50, 60 years later, in the 1800s. Anyhow, I first stumbled on this through a student who came to me looking for uh, information on the old boring systems that led into Westport in the past. And, uh, they had been involved in trawling through newspaper, old newspapers that had become available in the British Library in London. And they had stumbled on this name of Leeson and a mention of Westport. Now, uh, that was all that they were, this particular individual was interested in the roofscapes and the design of the town. He wasn't interested in names or genealogy like we were me. So uh, we followed it up, uh, the clue he had given us, and uh, 
eventually uh, we went, uh, were led to there is a section of the library in London which claims to have a copy of every newspaper printed in the English speaking world. And surely there was an advertisement. I have a copy of it here in my pocket. Anyone wants to see it? Uh, for announcing the, the building of this new town of Westport by William Lisa in 1767. And the advertisement was put in by Peter Brown Kelly, who was the son of, at the time, the son of the second Earl of Altamont. And in due course, he became well, the, the first Earl of Altamont, I should have said. In due course, this Peter Brown Kelly became himself the second Earl of Altamont, and then his son became the first Marcus of Sligo. Um, the Browns had 114,000 acres of land at the time here in West Mayo and West Galway, but there was no town as such. Uh, fairs were held for cattle and all that was held in Ahagawa, and, uh, but there was no uh, developed town. And this was, they were anxious to have this for a number of years. There were surveys carried out on the Brown estate, which are available. As you know, the, all the, the Westport House records are now in the National Archives and the National Library. And that survey is still is available but it was out in the rural area. Uh, anyhow, uh, Peter Brown was married to Elizabeth Kelly, who was from East Galway, and her father was a judge out in South America. And uh, I, we suspect that that was the way the Leeson connection was. Anyhow, apparently Leeson and uh, Peter Brown uh, got together, decided this new town of Westport, and they placed an advertisement in Faulkner's Dublin Journal, uh, which was a newspaper of the time, and that is an authentic advertisement and an authentic uh, uh, source of information. Now, uh, it is a, a, um, let me take it that most of you people have read it. It was... Sorry, John. This is the ad which John's research found and this proves beyond any doubt that it was William Leeson who initiated <coughs> The, uh, the development of Westport in conjunction with the Browns of Westport House. This is the advertisement which appeared in Faulkner's uh, Dublin Journal on the 17th of March, 1767, 250 years ago, announcing the proposed new town of Westport. And the ad read as follows, to all bricklayers, masons, stonecutters, carpenters, joiners, sawyers, slaters, plasterers, glazers, painters, and all other artisans in the building branch, and to the public in general. This is to inform them that a new town is immediately to be built near the old town of Westport in the county of Mayo, according to plans and elevation, etc., already fixed upon, consisting of a large and elegant market house situated in the centre of an octagon area of 200 feet and to be enclosed with 12 large well-finished slated houses together with three avenues for streets of 30 slated houses and several very large streets for great numbers of thatched houses and cabins to be built separately in such streets where houses or cabins are to be ad admitted in at an expense from about 20 to 40 guineas for each house or cabin together with several convenient plots for cabins of inferior kind. All workmen who are willing to contract 
for any of the said employments a desire to send their proposals, particularly specifying every article of the various branches in writing, sealed to the Honourable Peter Brown Kelly at Westport, Casabar, or William Leeson, Esquire, Architect, any time before the 6th of April next, when their proposals will be examined, and as no preference would be given to any tradesman, it is expected all persons to whom it may be convenient will apply, as such only will be closed uh, uh, with as our workmen, and willing to engage upon the cheapest terms that can give sufficient security for the performance of their covenant. All persons who choose to take plots of ground to build upon, according to the plans and regulations for each street, will meet with suitable encouragement. Westport is situated near the sea coast in a remarkably healthy and plentiful co uh, country, with the convenience of very fine and large lots of improvable ground with plenty of firewood and water and several convenient plots for bleach, greens, mills, etc. The plans and elevations, etc., are to be seen at Westport. That was, that was the actual ad of 250 years ago. More, there is 14,000 documents in it. It is the second biggest collection that they had. And it is possible, others have researched them and it, uh, it listed, there's a list of the first 100 leases of properties here in the town. It commencing with one right here at our back, I'd say over there, to, to actually the, to the famous George Clendinning's father. He was lease number one. And the uh, uh, 12 superior slated houses that are mentioned, I think you can identify them to this day. Yeah. So I was mentioning in the ad about the, the construction of a, a market house, and the black market house is directly behind us here. Uh, the same market house, uh, unfortunately in, in need of uh, restoration. Uh, the, sorry, the owner of it uh, at least uh, got it re-roofed uh, many years ago to pr try and preserve the shell of the building but uh, the ground floor of it was a market area and upstairs was a private theatre it would be wonderful if at some stage it was restored but that was the market house referred to in it here here beside us was one of the they referred in the ad the one to substantial houses in the Octane area at where the town hall here now, the front section of it was a private dwelling owned by the McDonald's. Now, I won't go into further history of that except to say that there were relations of the famous late great uh, Charlie Lydon, the vet from Newport Road, originally from Thornhill, and this was their townhouse. Come in, in here in winter and live out in Thornhill during the summer. Like yourself in Maine, you know, Oh, yeah, yeah. No, sorry, John. Uh, to research it further, uh, for some reason or other, we have now discovered that James Street, what's now in James Street, was first known as Newport Street. And uh, the Newport, we are suggest was a, a commercial banker from the south who had connections and who left his name on Newport Town and also here. But uh, uh, James Street was never heard of until 1807. It popped that it was Newport Street in, in leases. Um, then uh, there is a record of uh, um, I once got a list of the people who had a vote for, for the election to what is known as Grattan's Parliament in the 1780s. It was published in the Cahanamark Journal. And the next day I had phone calls from a lady in Sligo who was descended from one of the... Uh, um, 
the German name where the peer is out at the key. Uh, Hildebrand. Hildebrand. Exactly. And uh, there was a record in their family of um, leaving Germany, George Hildebrand, his wife and three children that they had passed through London on their way to Westport in the west of Ireland. Now, what brought them to spend his wife and three children from Germany to Westport at that time is open to question. Uh, anyhow, they arrived here and they settled at number six, the Octagon, which we identify as what is now the Wyatt Hotel. Now, uh, that family remained on in Westport. They developed a postal system. Uh, they done various buildings in Westport, including what is now McGing's Bar on High Street. That was their headquarters. That was the last post office that they ran as a private concern. Then uh, this postal uh, uh, took over as we know it, and they left Westport in 1910. But they were here until then, and there's still members of that family in down in County Sligo. Then there is um, Lord Sligo invited two brothers named Patton's from the, they came from County Derry and they developed the linen trade in Westport. One of them uh, took a lease on property here behind, uh, behind us down to an acre and a half down along the uh, Mill Road Church Road, uh, Church Lane, Lane. and uh, he developed there and he had the market house and all the opportunity here beside him. Um, he, second brother, uh, moved down to whatever was the renew of the Bank of Ireland and Hainahan's house on the Mall, and he lived there for years. He, he also apparently had most of the land out Castlebar Street and um, what's now the secondary school out there uh, around uh, the distillery of Rice College. Now, um, he remained on there until 1850 when he rented, and in precise, he rented his, his property to the Bank of Ireland. Uh, the, these families built up a lot of Westport and uh, their descendants come here looking for information on them from time to time. We have met them in this society uh, <coughs> and all we can do is help them out as best we can and get some information on them. You help them out a lot. Oh. Any other questions? No. Uh, thanks it's very much, John. That's an introduction to the uh, commencement of the development of the new town of Westport to the design of William Leeson, not James Wyatt, who has up to up to about 20 years ago was uh, ge generally credited and unfortunately as I say is still being credited in promotions for Westport. But there is, William uh, Neeson is the man who deserves the credit. Did Wyatt do anything here? Well, well Wyatt did as John explained. Wyatt had a, co a big connection with the grounds of Westport House. He designed a lot of the interior work in, in the rooms in Westport House and elements of Westport House. So that was why it was assumed, because he did so much work at Westport House that he was responsible for the town, but in fact he wasn't. 